In this video, I'm going to show you a really good coverage defense for defending aggressive catches and kind of things of the sort. How do you stop aggressive catches in Madden? We're going to give you a really good defense for that today out of the Big Nickel Over G. Big Nickel Over G has been probably my favorite defense all year going if you date it back if you date it back to last year um, big nickel has just been one of my favorite favorite defenses in the game um, because it allows you to do a lot of stuff from a coverage perspective now if you want to get my full big nickel over g defensive ebook i'll put a link in the description down below where you can check that out um, it's only 10 bucks to become a member of the patreon and it'll get you access to all of my madden 23 offensive and defensive ebook. So again, if you want to check that out, the link uh, is down below. So what makes ags so difficult to defend? Basically, in a nutshell, one-on-ones are hard. Another reason why uh, ags, I think ags are really good, if we just jump on the field here for a second, let's come out of basic defense, is you can get these isolations on the outside. So essentially, like if he's pressed up, I'm just going to snap the ball. He's going to come down. I'm going to wait till he turns his hips. And then I have a pretty good chance to, to ag. Now, on the left side, another thing is kind of becoming popular as well, which is just a basic streak to this guy. And based off of leverage, you can throw that over the top, right? Um, Rodgers didn't do the greatest job there. But again, I'll show you one more time here. If you watch, if I do this a couple times, I'm going to have a chance to throw something like that against this guy. And if he doesn't have a knockout ability, I'm going to be in good shape. So one of the things that I think is actually really valuable for defending ags is to have knockout abilities on your players. I think that is super, super important. Uh, but the second thing to defending ags is gonna be to have two people in the area, two people in the area. That has been kind of the tried and true uh, thing all year. You see there, Marlon Humphrey does have a knockout ability. So if he actually does make contact with him, then it will stop it. But if he doesn't touch him, you know, it's a free, free touchdown, okay? So, uh, have two people in the area. So, how do we do that? And this is why Big Nick Liberty affords us some really good opportunities. couple things. We need to, do, to um, keep our corners from turning their hips and running with an ag for as long as possible, okay? That's part of it. The second part of it is, again, we need to roll coverages to have them in the area. So it led me to this defense. This is my favorite, favorite defense for defending ags. It is a, we're going to have our auto flip off. Our auto alignment is going to be on base. And our zone coverage is going to be on match. Now the cover or the, the play we're going to come out in is we're going to use this play uh, pinch blitz. But what I like to do is I actually like to come out in a zone play and audible into this because it's going to help it be a little bit more um, disguised, if you will. So we're going to come out in like cover four or something, audible into this, and then we're going to show blitz. Now, when we show blitz, you're going to notice that these cornerbacks, they get a, a really good alignment, right? They're, they're not pressed, but they're not off. And if we drop these outside corner, or this, um, these safeties here, Clark and Fuller, into outside thirds to their corresponding side, this is significantly helpful for defending ags. Now I wanna show you this quick throw wheel here. Um, you see that because of alignment of Big Nickel, that quick throw wheel is really not possible because of the show blitz alignment. So if I wanted to, um, you know, show blitz here. Whoops. Um, if I want to show blitz here, there we go. You'll notice that if I try to quick throw this wheel, he's kind of there. Like he's kind of there for sure. Now, um, another thing that you can do is when you show blitz, if you look at this alignment, I can really keep forgetting all I'm gonna just come out in it just for fun. I'll show you the difference when you come out in the play too. You can you can come out in the play. It's not like the biggest deal, um, but against like trips and stuff, I have noticed it can help with alignment. But anyway, just show blitz. So you see here, this is what we what we have. Now, uh, what's good about this is nobody's gonna try to press. The coverage itself is not gonna try to press. If I want to back off these corners. Um, you can do that and what the, what this is going to do for you is if they try to throw these quick throw wheels 
they'll lurk it. Like, he, he lurks over there. And now that ag has two people in the area and we're able to stop it. Okay? So that's a big, 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 big part of this. Now, um, who's your user in this defense? Your user is going to be this guy, Williams. So what I like to do to keep it straight, pretty, pretty simple, um, is we're going to man up one of these D linemen on the running back. I don't personally really care which one you do. I think if you're thinking about the coverage, the obvious choice is this defensive end. If you're thinking about pressure, you might want to man up the defensive tackle. But this right here has been really good. Now, because we're not shading underneath, um, and I like to shade outside too, just to help kind of, again, get these guys outside. But because we're not shading underneath, you're going to notice here that, you know, we're not really in danger of anything. And I'm going to be the robber in the middle of the field looking for any kind of crosser. Now, uh, this defense is super simple. It's easy to set up. But what I love about this is it just does a really good job of defending aggressive catches. Um, if someone is running a lot of aggressive catches on me, this is pretty darn easy uh, to stop aggressive catches because you're always going to have two people in the area from the second the ball snapped because of the alignment of your outside thirds. I think that is a super, super underrated piece of this. These slot cornerbacks, this year, in my opinion, they're not really that good in coverage. Um, press coverage, by and large, to me, is not really that great this year. But off coverage with these guys rolling, um, I think it's I just think it's really, 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 really effective. Like, if you look here, what's open on this play? Like, the running back's the only thing that I haven't had the chance, and that's just because we don't have a good co coverage guy. But in Mutt, you're going to have somebody at that spot that's fast that can cover um, and, and be effective. Now, just for fun, I wanted to jump into a couple other formations and just walk you through kind of what this what this defense looks like. Again, your auto because you have auto flip off, it's like a big deal for this. You're going to see stuff like this where you're going to get this real nice alignment uh, pretty much in every formation. So you see here. Um, now, this one is a little bit worrisome uh, with the way the way that this formation works. You can throw this quick throw. Um, like that right there. So let's say you're playing U trips, right? You can tweak this for the formation you face. So if you wanted to, you could do something like we're gonna drop these two safeties now into thirds, and we're gonna man this guy up and back him off or something, right? You could do these little little subtle tweaks like this. Uh, we'll take this really to a whole nother level against other formations. But you see, just great alignment across the board. The safeties are there to roll and help. Uh, however they can now uh, the last formation that I did want to sh or go over is uh, spread just because that's something that a lot of people like to ag out of so I'm gonna jump in spread here and we're gonna show you what this looks like this also kind of serves as a, a cover covering um, you know multiple trips or trips in motion or new trips in motion but anyway show blitz boom so here we are so again, all we're doing is, or all, all we need to do is drop both of these slot DBs or slot safeties into coverage, right, into thirds. Then from there, you can back these guys off and take the D lineman and man him up on the running back. And then voila, there you are. Everything's covered and um, you have really good alignment from this. Again, I can't stress enough how good this year off coverage man is. Off coverage man is so good this year. So they try to throw streaks. You're getting up in the middle of the seam here. That's that, you can't you can't live on that, man. Like you can't live on that on either side. And then the beauty of this, like I said, is because they're not pressing, it takes a while for the DB to even turn their hips to the first place. Like if you look over here, you've got 1,001, 1,002. You've got about two seconds that this guy's not turning his hip. At this point, they're going to try to throw it, and this guy's right in his window. This guy actually could play both of these seams, to be honest. And then over here, he looks like he's going to start here. Now, this would be the player to try to hit, um, you know, but that's a that's a tight throw this year. Your user can actually get there. So that is, um, you know, my favorite way to defend ags. If I'm getting ag consistently and I know that that is literally their offense, I'm going to something like this and we're backing people off. And, you know, we're going to live with, like, you can take your little underneath route. But most of the time, you'll find this actually does a pretty good job against underneath routes as well. 
Off coverage of man is super powerful this year. I'll leave it at that. But anyways, if you want to learn more about this, check out our Big Nickel Over G defensive ebook. The link to sign up for that is in the description below. It's only $10 to become a member. It'll get you access to everything. All ebooks, all updates to the ebooks, any new ebooks that we release. We dropped a brand new ebook this week in there as well, uh, covering some stuff. So if you want to sign up for the Patreon, the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching the video, and we hope to see you over at the Patreon page.